My name is Barbara Embry Brooks Forbush. I was born in Fredericksburg, June the 23rd, 1929, to Ethel Embry, who married Elliot Brooks. And after I was married and lived in an apartment in Fredericksburg, that was I was married in 1949, and um, we moved over to Argyle Heights in 1957. Uh, and um, <clears throat> my father was from Falmouth, and all of his family lived in Stafford. And I have a lot of childhood memories of going to play with cousins in, um, in Falmouth. One of the main ones was when um, on New Year's Eve, my aunt um, Geneva uh, Brooks lived right there in Falmouth and we would go to her home for New Year's Eve dinner. And then before midnight, the uh, young people would walk up the hill to the old Union Church and uh, ring the bell for New Year's Eve. I think the bell has been removed from the church now, but at that time it was still in the belfry. That was old Union Church. And then uh, below that was uh, a home of my cousin called Gordon Green Terrace. And before Route 1 cut the highway through the front of the house, we used to have a lot of fun rolling down the terrace hillside there, down to the road in Lower Falmouth. Um, that was uh, down to Cambridge Street. And um, I had a cousin there named Emily Grace. I had another cousin in Falmouth, Anne Brooks, and then um, Caroline Brooks and Pina Brooks. And then um, during the holiday season when we needed Christmas greens at home and a Christmas tree, my father would take me up to Sane Pocket. That was off of Route 657. Um, up, it, it was called the John England Home. It had been in the England family since 1789. And uh, it was on the Rappahannock River. And um, it was next to Hunter's Iron Works, the forge up there. And um, let's see, we would, uh, that house burned, so it's not there now. I think it's, um, the ruins are on a golf course up in that area. And then on the corner of Butler Road and Route 1, in downtown Falmouth, as I called it, um, my uncle Eddie Brooks had um, a farm there, and we had ponies. And that's where I learned to ride ponies. <coughs> Excuse me. He had a sleigh, and in the uh, with horse pulled sleigh, and in the winter when it snowed, he would come to town, and pick my me up or my family members, and uh, go through town with the bells, sleigh bells ringing, on the sled, and that was always such a treat. I lived in town, I lived on Lewis Street, which was just a bit of block from Kenmore. And Kenmore was more or less my playground. <laughs> my neighbors, the neighborhood children always had fun playing up there. And sometime in the afternoons, if there was um, gingerbread and tea left over in the kitchen, they would give it to the children in the yard to eat. So that was a treat. Um, <clears throat> when I moved to, uh, let's see, I married Charles Warren Forbush in 1949, and I taught school 
at um, Little Falmouth Elementary on Butler Road. I taught the fourth grade in the early 1950s, and I still see some of the students occasionally in the shopping centers when, I, when I'm down. Um, let's see. I, we built our house, as I said, in um, Argyle Heights, which is just up the road, in 1956. I understand, but I'm not positive that at one time that was part of this Fur Farms uh, subdivision. <clears throat> but um, Dr. Kennedy had bought the property and developed it into a subdivision um, back in the 30s, I think. So I had uh, one daughter was uh, born in Fredericksburg. Um, then I, when I moved over here, I had two daughters. They were born at Mary Washington in Fredericksburg, but both attended, uh, all three of the children, my children attended um, Fairy Farm School, elementary school. And then I continued to live there f um, 58 years. My husband died in 19, I mean, uh, 2005, though. Uh, Dr. Kennedy, who developed uh, Argyle Heights, lived next door to us in, on Lewis Street in Fredericksburg. And um, we knew him so well. So when, before we were married, um, or when we were married, he asked my husband and I, if we would like to have a, uh, buy a lot in his subdivision. So we were one of the first houses up there. And... Um, we, let's see, we were married in 49, and we didn't build the house until 1957. Not really that much, because um, Fredericksburg was very small. There were only about 5,000 people there when I was a child, the population. And it, um, it grew dramatically after World War II. You know, we were surrounded by... Army, Navy, and Marines, and uh, there was Camp A.P. Hill, and that was uh, really active during World War II. And uh, on Saturday nights, I couldn't even go downtown. There were so many soldiers, and also Marines and uh, Navy men from the Algren, mm -hmm. and of course the Marines at Quantico. But I think they, so many of them saw a good thing, uh, knew a good thing when they saw it and returned to Fredericksburg mm -hmm. after they got out of the service. But um, Route 1 went right through downtown Fredericksburg. Princess Anne Street was Route 1. Mm -hmm. And um, my father's office was across from the city hall up on the second floor. And I used to sit up there at the window, especially on weekends, Fridays, and watch um, all the cars go by with the Sir Navy's uh, sailors from uh, Norfolk going to Washington to have a big weekend up there. Oh, great. They had friends that were, uh, families were building homes in Argyle Heights and also in Fur Farms. And I think when my daughter Jane grew up, that must have been five little girls her age in the neighborhood. But my oldest daughter had um, mostly boys in the neighborhood at her age. There's four years difference in each one of my children, mm -hmm. three girls. Mm -hmm. 